In this video, we'll be looking at muscle structure in some sense, uh, specifically about the sliding filament model. But before we actually talk about the mechanism of muscle contraction, we will really need to understand how uh, the different parts, the different proteins are actually organized in order to fully understand how the model works. So there are a few key words that you need to be aware of, and here they are. So first of all, we've got the word sacrame, the basic functional unit of a fiber. A sacrolemma refers to a plasma membrane that is wrapped around the fibers, so like, almost like a plastic wrap around a bundle of uh, sticks. Sacroplasm, like the name implies, is cytoplasm that is actually shared within the fibers. Cytoplasm is made up of liquid or fluid inside to allow different ions to move across, and that is very important for muscle contraction. Then we got sacroplasmic reticulum, which is basically endoplasmic reticulum within the sacromere. And that is very, very important because it actually gets depolarized when it receives a signal and releases calcium ions. That is crucial to uh, the actual muscle contraction bit. And then we got myofibril, which is long cylindrical organelles that bring about muscle contraction. And they're made of actin and myosin, which are the two crucial proteins that we will look at in a bit more detail later on. If we have to look at, generally speaking, how these uh, muscle or these different parts are actually organized together, and this is how they look like. So let's say this is a myofibril and it is made up of actin myosin. So the actin is basically distributed throughout the entire thing, and the darker bands are the myosin, which is actually the thicker filament. We say that these myofibrils are then all packed together like sticks, like, like so. So again, each of them will have the uh, myosin distributed like so and the actin throughout the entire thing. They can be separated based on the Z line, something we call a Z line. And simply put, it is just a way of actually understanding how the structure is like. And we say that actually each of these parts is a sacromere. So that is one functional unit and that's another one and it's all connected. And like I said, that is the myofibril. And these myofibrils all have to be uh, stuck together in some way to make sure they can function well together. And we say that they're wrapped around by the sacrolemma, which is the plasma membrane. And the whole thing uh, also gets the, the sacroplasm inside and the sacroplasmic reticulum uh, around it as well. I'm not going to draw it out here. Uh, and the whole thing is considered as one uh, muscle fiber. And imagine having multiple muscle fibers all bundled up together to make up the whole muscle. And so this is what it is. We've got the myofibril, which is a long cylindrical organelle made up of actin and myosin like so. And each section inside can be considered as a sacromere, which is one basic functional unit of a fiber. We will look into this structure in a bit more detail later on. Then all of these myofibrils are wrapped around by sacrolemma, which is a plasma membrane uh, containing all these myofibrils and the cytoplasm, which is called sacroplasm, and sacroplasmic reticulum uh, in order to make a whole fiber. And now let's have a look in a bit more detail at the sacro, uh, at a sacromere. I mentioned earlier that there is something called the Z-line, and, um, and this is the Z-line here. It's not a proper structure in some sense, but it is there to help us uh, identify or define the uh, sacromere. So we got one Z-line and the other Z-line here. And we say that uh, in between the two adjacent Z-lines, that is the sacromere. It is made up of actin and um, myosin, and these are the two structures here. Again, we'll look into their structures specifically later on, but here, briefly, as a general note, that is actin. Uh, it's easily recognizable because it is the thinner filament, so these six filaments here are all actin. And this is myosin, which is the much thicker filament. We're looking at the structure through um, an electron microscope or uh, x-ray diffraction, then we can see that there are dark bands and light bands. Now, considering the fact that if we're looking it down from that top down, that is the darker band. Just keep in mind the fact that myosin is thicker and the fact we've got overlaps, that will appear darker. And everything that doesn't have the overlap, so anything that goes extends to the other side until it reaches the next myosin in some sense, all the way down there, these are all the light bands. And again, no overlaps, thin actin filaments, it will appear light under inspection until it reaches the next bit and those are the dark bands again. And we have a special area here which is called the H zone. Just be aware that this is the case. 
Uh, we've looked at the structure of a muscle fiber. Now we're looking at the basic functional unit, which is a sacromere, which is defined by the two adjacent set lines along the myofibril. Uh, it's made up of, again, myosin, the thicker filament, and actin, the thinner one, and it's laid up like this. The overlaps of my myosin and actin is called the dark band, and then non-overlapping bits are called the light bands. And what will happen in muscle contraction is that the dark band will stay exactly the same length. It won't, it won't actually change anything, but the light band will then shorten by a lot more. And that brings about muscle contractions. Then finally, we will have a look at the detailed structures of actin and myosin. First of all, let's look at actin. Now, actin actually is a, it's a molecule in which you get two amino acid chains wrapped around each other like a helix. But in this case, uh, in order for us to actually understand what happens in the muscle contraction mechanism, I'm going to draw it this way. So this is the actual actin filament, the one that actually looks like a flute in some sense with dents inside. But it is actually wrapped around by another protein called tropomyosin, and this is the filament that is around it. And the tropomyosin is held in place by a particular structure of the protein called the troponin. The troponin later on will actually bind to calcium ions and that will lead to a conformational change. It's actually worth saying this now is throughout the whole mechanism, uh, you will note that whenever there is a structure that is being bound to something else or something else binds to it, it will always lead to a conformational change, which means a shape change. And because of the conformational change, this will almost always lead to some sort of movement or some sort of change in binding. So it's always interacting uh, in either way. So in this case, troponin later on will bind to calcium uh, ions, which will lead to the movement of the tropomyosin. And if we look at this carefully, you can see the tropomyosin is over overlapping the dents here. And these dents are actually called the actin myosin binding site. And as the name implies, this is the area in which uh, the myosin will bind to the actin. And that's uh, the structure of actin. Now let's have a look at myosin on the other hand. Now myosin actually kind of looks like one of those hair brushes that you can see in shops. Um, it's got a cylindrical shape as well, but lots of sticks coming out with little heads on, on the end of those sticks. Um, you can see in comparison to actin, it is much thicker, and that is one of the first of the, of, of the few things that makes it different. So we say that this is the myosin, and we say each of these extensions here is called the myosin filament, or the myosin tail. And at the end of it, we get the myosin head, and that is the important thing to know in this particular case. And the myosin head will later on bind to the AM binding site. Uh, and you can also see that there's something stick to the end of each of these myosin heads. And that, at its resting state, it will be ADP. In certain cases, that ADP, once the myosin head moves, the ADP will be released and replaced by an ATP, depending on the situation. But right now, it is relaxed, so it is ADP. Apart from the fact that it will bind to the uh, actinomyosin binding site by forming cross bridges, it also has an ATPase component in it. When it is prompted or activated um, by calcium ions, it will then hydrolyze ATP to ADP and uh, an organic phosphate. And that is very important in terms of uh, the muscle contraction as well. And these are the detailed structures of actinomyosin. We've got actin, which is this filament here, which then is called the actinomyosin binding site. Uh, there's the troponin structure which holds the tropomyosin in place, covering the binding site. Uh, at some point it will bind to calcium ions, which means that it can change the structure, revealing these um, binding sites later on. On the other hand, myosin, which is much thicker than actin, it's got uh, myosin filaments or myosin tails with myosin head at the end of it. These my it myosin heads will normally be attached to an ADP when it is relaxed. These heads also have a ATPase component in it, which can hydrolyze ATP. It can also form cross bridges with the actin at these binding sites when um, the appropriate time comes as well. And so here for a very quick summary, we've got, we talked about the structure of a muscle fiber, which is a, a bundle of myofibrils made up of actin and myosin. Um, it is wrapped together, all these myofibrils are wrapped together by a sacrolemma with the sacroplasm and sacroplasmic reticulum inside. And we say that each of these myofibrils or fibers have a particular section called the sacromere, which is the basic functional unit of a fiber. 
And here we look at the detailed structure of the sacramere, and like, like I said earlier, it's made up of actin, the thinner filament, and the myosin, the thicker filament as well. It is defined by two adjacent set lines uh, in here. Also, the overlapping bit, when looked under a microscope, you can see that there's the dark band, and the itch zone is the bit that only has myosin in it. Then anything that is non-overlapping is called the light band. When we looked at the detailed structures of actin and myosin, actin, here we've got the troponin holding the tropomyosin in place, uh, covering the actin-myosin binding site. Then we've got the myosin, a thicker filament with the myosin head exposed like that, normally attached on the ADP when relaxed, uh, and the myosin head has an ATPase component to hydrolyze ATP and can uh, bind to the actin, forming cross bridges. And in the next video, we'll be looking at the actual detailed mechanism of a sliding filament model based on what we talked about in this video.